Hi everyone. In this difficult time, I hope everyone stay safe and well. This morning, after I practice my martial art, I take a walk in my front garden and notice those five trees I plant. When I bought them years ago, they are roughly the same size. And uh, years later, look, they all change to different shape and the sizes. This kind of remind me about culture, really. We as human beings live in this world as the trees and the culture as the environment who shape us into different forms. Many people often ask me, what exactly is a Chinese cultural consultant do? My answer is, any cultural consultant is a supporter to help you dealing with cultural matters. For instance, in marketing, it will help you deliver your marketing message loud and clear and be welcomed in the culture you want to promote your product and service. In training, they provide cultural understanding so you can better serve your customers or understand your partner. It could also mean bring new point of review to your business. But culture is much more than that and much more powerful because just like those trees live in this nature we human beings live in our culture it is everywhere and it is in everything we do so today I would like to use this five tree to give you an example how powerful Chinese culture is. Okay, let's take a close look of those five trees. Here's the first one. You get the sunlight first. And here's the second one. Here's the third one. Fourth one and the fifth one. I move back so you can see them clearly. Let's take a moment and think about what this five tree can tell us. Let's first have a look at this first tree. It's the first one to see the sunlight. It kind of have everything. But surprisingly, it didn't grow that high. Instead, it extended itself wildly. Now, let's look at the second one. It doesn't have the advantage of the first one had. Therefore, it's much lower because it cannot compete with the first one to the sunlight in terms of height. Instead, this one go much wilder. So it can receive the light from this direction. <clears throat> and now let's look at the third one. It's kind of have a, a round shape, like a typical tree we generally could imagine. Straight, healthily spared, 
couldn't say much wrong. And the same goes for the false one. Let's look back at this third one. How come the third one didn't have enough resource can grow into a better shape of tree than the first and the second one? This is a very important message for all of us. <clears throat> if we take the first tree as a new company in a new market, he have all the customer he want. But look what happened to it. It lost its direction. And some may say it lost its motivation to go higher. Let's look at the second one. His main competitor, the second company, come into the new market. There's certain aspect of the business already been covered. He's trying to play smart to outgrow his opponent in a different direction. There's no necessary to say right or wrong for these two companies. But certainly the result is not what we're looking for in general for a tree. And now let's look at the third one. He have to be careful because he don't have the relaxation of the whole market for himself. He have to be more smart to have a purpose and a direction. And because the distance between the third one and the first one. He is no longer like the second one, stay in the shadow of the first one. So it can grow higher. And once it starts to grow higher over the first tree, it can expand himself, make it into a purple shape like symmetry shape. And that's the advantage of not being first in Chinese culture. And now let's look at the false one. It kind of grew even higher and even wider than the third one. Because if you are the false one into this new market, the first three smart guy probably already done the most of work. And if you want to stay in the business, you have to be truly strong in every aspect to survive. And because the distance and the time delay you had when you enter your business, you probably have a better direction sense to how to grow. And now let's look at the last one. You see, it's really slim, but really tall. Because that's the only way this trick could survive. So in real world case, what are those three represent to us? Does it ring any bell to you? Take the IT industry as an example. I would say the first two three is like Yahoo and AOL. They are early into the market, had all the advantage, but didn't really come out so well. 
And the third, fourth tree, I would say they are Microsoft and Google. They have the experience of the pioneer, and have the knowledge and the space from their competitor. So generally, you will find the market leader are not those one who come into the market first, or those one come into the market last. Generally, someone come into the market in the middle timing and position. And now let's look at the last one. This reminds us never, never mind how late in you go into any market. There always a chance. For me, this tree represents the new data company, AI company, we are AR company, and they are the future. They are maybe not as big as the three and the four, but they are nice and strong and tall and straight with a pure target motivation. And once this one grow much higher than those old fella, it can spare, become the new third and the fourth become the market dominant. People may say I just made up the IT story with five trees. So let me give you another example. Let's say I'm working in marketing so a lot. So let me give you an example in marketing. In terms of, uh, let's say, sportswear. I would say the first and the second tree are like the sports brand Everlast, Mizuno. They established in like in early 19th century. I think Mizuno is 1906 and Everlast is 1910. They are the pioneer in the sports market. And now looks, let's look at the third one and the fourth one. I think you probably already realize who they are. They are the Nike and the Adidas. So both companies, Adidas founded in 1941, Nike founded in 1964. And now let's look at the fourth, last one. Who they represent? They represent the young brand like Gavin Green in golf, founded in 1990. Under Armour, founded in 1996. Jim Shark, founded in 2012. Have a good look of those five trees. It tell us a lot. It certainly tell me a lot. And uh, in all the things I'm talking today, it is a fundamental philosophical thinking in Confucian. I called being in the middle, some translate as the golden mean. And that's why when you see a Chinese, they are not in a hurry to be the first one. But they are not in, definitely don't want to be the last one. They always try to maintain in the middle. So, I guess now I answer the question, what is a Chinese cultural consultant do? It really depends on your situation. If you just want simple marketing work done, then it can help you do that. 
And if you want to become Nike, Adidas, Nike, Google, we can help you do that as well. I know I may go to going into too deep part of Chinese culture today, but here is a three simple takeaway for all the entrepreneur or anyone in doing anything. The first one, don't feel overexcited if you are the first one in a field or in the market because the biggest competitor is no other company. It's yourself. You lose in your direction. And that's the hardest thing to do, to see yourself clearly. The second takeaway <coughs> is don't be afraid. If you see a few big name company in front of you, this may seem really big and strong, cover all the aspects of the market. But trust me, you have more advantage because you know what they have done. What's their advantage? Their mistake. You can learn from them and become better, like the shirt and the false tree. Finally, the third tip, it is never too late to go into any market. As long as you can keep your head up and willing to do the effort, find that unique position, find that gap, and you will be successful. So here's my three simple message for everyone. What is your takeaway from today, from those simply five trees in my front garden? I leave you to it. And in the meantime, stay safe, be well. See you after this 